Now, with this game, two African-American coaches on a big platform like this, how important is it for current as well as future African-American coaches to see this happen? I think it's important because you often think in this business, in this profession, there is a lot of nepotism. There is um, just based off of who you know, networking, and there is a, um, a ceiling for African-American coaches. You know, as, as coordinators, you know, in the NFL, um, it's tough to give it a serious look to be a head coach nowadays. Right. You know, I mean, and, and it, it, I mean, for me, I didn't go through it the traditional way. Right. I came from, you know, work, doing my wealth management business to acting and doing all this right. to being a head coach without having to be a GA or an assistant coach and being it for 14, 15 years and then get an opportunity. So it's just to show that, hey, you know, I can now get into coaching like anyone else without all the politics. It's about who you know and really the, the and, and really what you bring to the table. So when they see, you know, myself and Marcus in this position, um, it, it hopefully it encourages uh, other African Americans to get involved, but also allow allow other people to see us differently and to give us the same opportunities as someone else. It's not of color, you know, the coach on Sundays. Not just be a position coach, but become a coordinator, get into front office, get into some ownership, be a head coach. There's still a, a an eye-opening statistic out there where only, I guess, what, maybe three or four head coaches in the NFL are black head coaches. I did a program years ago. We were talking about the statistics of how many African-American coaches are at the collegiate level and the NFL. And it was like right around one or 2%. Well, it's still that way. That was 20 some odd years ago. So there hasn't been a huge change with that. So yes, it, it is great to see that you can come into the profession and be successful without having to go through the, the red tape and the ceilings and uh, the glass ceilings that you have to try to break through to be successful. Kind of putting you on the spot, what do you think helps advocate or change the, the philosophy or the mindset of getting more African American coaches in these positions? Higher, you know, because to be in this position, you can say, okay, I checked the box in terms of, uh, you know, diversity and inclusion and equity and inclusion, but is that the right person for the room? That's very important. Um, so it's, it's just constantly getting our African-American brothers out there and meeting other people, various for, forms. Um, I was uh, I did the Bill Walsh diversity program. It's off season, spent time with the Bears, had a chance to get in front of their staff, know people. So as things change and there's new opportunities, people will remember say, oh, let me hit up Ed for this X, Y, and Z to see who's interested in this position. So it's really getting out there and getting in front of people and showing that you're the best person for the job. You have the right temperament, the right color for it, the right texture that they're looking for, for whatever it is as they're building out their staff. Speaking of coaches, especially with the HBCU ranks, obviously Coach Sanders is now at Colorado after you know mm -hmm. a successful tenure at Jackson State. Um, amongst the HBCU ranks, it's yourself, obviously Hugh Jackson at Gremlin. Um, there's some obviously dialogue of saying like, you know, well, a lot of people are looking at Coach George and Coach Jackson to kind of continue that, that narrative of changing what it means to be an HBCU athlete mm -hmm. or specifically an HBCU football player and the opportunities that, that could potentially come professionally after that. Is that something that you take on um, pretty seriously now, even more since, you know, the departure of, of a coach like Coach Deion Sanders? Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't change for me. It's always been taken very seriously, yeah. and to help our players reach the next level. Um, you know, it's, it's just this school has already has always produced great players, Hall of Fame players for sure. I mean, that's well documented. Yeah, well documented. So it's not about me coming in and doing. That. I think now, you know, it's just doing, making this place a better place. That's my goal making it better than when, than when I got here. I want to leave it uh, for someone else when I'm gone. The bones have, it's, it's been an advancement. It's been 
progress has been made, culture, a standard has been established. To say that there's a certain pressure now that, that Dion is gone, no, it's not. That the work still has to be done. He's done all that he can do at Jackson State for, from his perspective. Now it's time for TC uh, to take it to another level, you know, in terms of that, that same requirement, the same standard, everything that their prime injected into them in the same way. So now, you know, moving it forward in the business realm, doing things correctly in their, their business doing dealings and um, making sure our kids graduate, making sure that they have the right things uh, from housing to their getting their money to um, all the things that the PWIs are, that they get on a day-to-day -day basis, we should be able to establish that at any and every HBCU.